Ahoy, Captains, and today it's Colonel Mustard with the Lightning on Loop. And, uh, the Lightning is a ship that I got out of, uh, not a premium container, a regular one. I bought five premium containers at the beginning just to see, you know, what came in it. I did get the Acosta in it, but after that, I just played directives, and I got it. I really wasn't trying to go for it, and it just kind of happened, so... I have, uh, there's a couple clanmates of mine that are, like, really trying to get the lightning before it can't, comes out. Uh, and they were struggling to get it. I got it really quickly. Um, I, and I just told them, hey, the best way to get it is not to care. And it worked for me. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sure you guys have seen Notzer's video where he tried really hard. Uh, and maybe if he didn't care, he would have got it sooner. Uh, but then again, RNG's a fickle bitch. Anyway, so as an all replay breakdown, so I'm going to go ahead and pause and pull up the team lineup. So on this game, we have five DDs. It's a tier 10 battle, which isn't quite optimal. What also isn't quite optimal is that most of the enemy team are either gunboats or very good hybrids. Definitely one radar ship, a potential second, although we have two radar ships, and then we have five battleships. So I am working with a teammate here, and initially we're going to be going to C, but I'm quite a bit slower than him. I'm running no flags on this, as you can see. So he's heading to C. Uh, I'm trying. I'm thinking about supporting him, but I see our the allied kid heading to B, and I want to support him, but I'll, I want to support him from a different angle. So I'm kind of cutting into a fairly risky position in the mid but if i cut in at the right angle it should keep any battleships from getting full pens on me this is actually my very first game in the lightning so i'm pushing in now i am quite a bit more detectable than a lot of their destroyers so i will get early warning like the benson the akazuki i do outspot them so i can set myself in a position to benefit me the most which is exactly what i'm trying to do i want to spot for this kid the kid is a very good uh, gunboat. Uh, it has a heel. I love the kid. It's one of my. It's one of my. It's one of my favorites. Not a very high damage dealer, but a fun ship to play, in my opinion. So I'm pushing in, maybe a little too aggressive, but um, I should start spotting him. So boom, I spot the Benson. Now I my exfiltration strategy is to push along that island ridge, and now I open up. Now, unfortunately, I, there was, they were really ready for me. And I'm going to have to pop my smoke. I do also pop my hydro. Huh. Well, that's not optimal. Um, right, we'll, 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 right, we'll go to my second game. We'll go to my second game. All right, second game. I've already capped C with no consequence. Our team's doing a terrible job at defending it. It's okay. Right now, I have my Hydro Pop to help defend the North Carolina against the Cossacks torpedoes. That is my objective, and to take B. Now, if I was the Cossack, I would be coming back to this cap, so I'm trying to prepare for that. My team is kind of struggling, sort of, not really. I mean, questionable positioning all around, but we can, we can pull this together. All right, Ships in the cap. Ships in the cap. Oh, and real quick, uh, here is the lineup. So I need to take out... I don't need to take out this Cossack. I just need to get him away. That's all I have to do. I just have to get him out of here. Now, he got his reset that he wanted. But now all I have to do... I have another smoke. I'm popped it. I popped it. And I need to just set myself up to retake this cap. Oh, mother! F <sighs> All right, War Gaming. All right, you win. I'll. Okay, good. All right. So I'm already do. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pause it. I'm already doing okay this game. I've got two kills, 44k damage. That's all right. Let's uh. Look, 
I, I have the detonation flag on. I should be good. I should be good. So now all I have to do is beat this lightning, and then maybe I can make something happen. That's good. Let's do this. We can do it. Yeah, pop my hydro. I'm going to approach. Hopefully get undetected. And move in. Let's get this guy spotted, and then we can own him. That's all we have to do. Maybe game four will be better? Maybe game five? Alright, game six. Game six. We can do it. <laughs> what, what the heck is going on? Alright, maybe there's something in the update notes I missed. Let's, let's go through this. Um, no. Uh, nothing there. Oh, here we go. Well, I guess when you when destroyers are have been nerfed to their current state, I guess the next logical step is to start nerfing the players that are still good in them. Um, but you know, I once said that it doesn't matter how many times you fall down. What matters is, is that you keep getting up. And then the officer told me that's not how a field sobriety test works. So let's crack open a beer and move on to. What I think about the lightning. Now that we're done with the detonations, although not really. Ironically, uh, my, out of my first nine games, I was detonated in seven of them. Six of those games, I was detonated before I could make even a remote impact. So my uh, initial impressions of the ship were not good. And over half of those games was with a detonation flag. This game... I took off the detonation flag, I put on flags to make me detonate more, and I didn't detonate, I detonated one more time through the rest of my experience of the ship while gaining 150 XP. So instead, I'm throwing out the formula, I'm going to show some clips, and I'm going to give you guys my opinion of the ship itself and kind of the design of the line, sort of. So the one thing it's good at, I'm, those are the first two clips I'm going to show you, is what it's good at. Contesting caps is what I'm showing in this one. So I got a Z-52. Z-52, and if any of you guys have watched my uh, 15 words uh, or less reviews of Tier 10s, uh, you know the Z-52, based on that, is a fantastic cap contester. Now, I'm going to whiff all these torps. I thought I blew an extra torp. That's why I dumped these last four because I thought there was still three in the tube and I wanted to clear my tube so I could regroup. I didn't mean to dump that many torps, but eh, little misplays. They don't kill you. So I'm going to mess with the Seattle for a bit. But as far as like cap contesting and actually DD fighting, the ship isn't bad at it. Um... And one thing that I that I when, when this ship was in development, when they were like, oh, "Okay, no engine boost," I was skeptical. But then they added the acceleration factor, and honestly, I don't miss the engine boost. I really don't. You will not miss engine boost. I mean, yeah, when you're trying to get from one side of the map to the other, which is an issue because of other design decisions, you notice it then. But as far as like your point your point on point engagements like I'm doing right now. Now, oh, uh, by the way, I I would pause that, but I don't want to draw too much attention to it. I spotted those the second he fired him and the Shema still got killed by them. And he only fired one set. So, I'm a little concerned about how well I can fight this, but then I remember the Z52 if he's not using his advantages has really bad DPM. And so, like I essentially like more than equalized our health. Thankfully, we had a Minotaur messing with him too so now he's an easy kill for me but i have this hydro i'm keeping him spotted the only thing spotting me right now is a plane the z52 has not popped hydro yet the one thing i am worried about is that magami because he's got a lot of guns and a lot of he damage and i don't want to get shot by him so i'm going to move forward but as far as like cap contesting this thing is very solid with it very good against fighting other dds and actually the smoke that it comes with Although I don't particularly like it, it is good of disengaging than re-engaging quickly. That is one thing that is nice about this smoke, and it's something I do enjoy. 
And we have a Shimakaze that pops up. And... But I just beat a Z-52 in a capture control when he technically had all the advantages. Uh, that's not saying this ship is better than a Z-52 at doing it, but a Z-52 does have to use the advantages to win a capture control. But at the same time, this ship is very good. It's essentially a tier 8 gearing in that respect, except you have a kind of a shitty smoke. It does let you re-engage quicker because of the quick reload time, and the Hydro gives you some safety, uh, which is the core design element. Oh, by the way, those torps are spotted, and this Shema somehow is able to dodge even more of them. But anyway, let's go on to the, no the next clip, and we're going to look at another aspect of this ship. Alright, sea she sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled peppers in three, two, one. So in this clip, I'm going to highlight a different aspect of the ship that I actually find really enjoyable. And that's the torpedoes. Not them specifically, but the single launch factor. Um, the ship and the design of the ship it's fun, but it's only fun in the right situation. And finding in that situation doesn't actually happen in a lot of games. In this game, it does. And so I see this Nagato at 3.6. I see Harakaze coming in. I see my opportunity. I actually don't intend on dropping my Torp super early. I want to do a smoke. I want to let this Nagato know where I am because I want him to go nose in. I'm going to harass the Harakaze, and of course I have a teammate that's trying to kill me, apparently. I actually think that's my division mate, too. So I'm going for the Nagato here. And then because I think that Harakaze is either going to go wide or cut his speed, I do a different. That's two different. I went single launch and then spread launch. And ka -ching. Moments like this, they're kind of rare. It was the perfect situation for me to be in. And I succeeded in it. That's where this ship is actually kind of fun to play. But it has nothing to do with the smoke or the other gimmicks they attach to it. Just the single launch was enough to make that a fun engagement. And my opinion is is that they've gimmicked the ship. No, not gimmick. Well, we're going to avoid the word gimmick as much as, as, much as I can. They have put this ship and they've put the, this line in such a niche that it's only effective in certain situations. Now, what situation is that? Is that in? I'm gonna dis. You know, I disconnected. Uh, rough in this game when I when I go for the lion is when I I disconnect and I'm pretty sure I torp hit him, but I I won't see it. I'm trying to avoid the Ibuki right now, and I'm actually gonna um, go into more detail about the niche stuff in the next clip where I showcase a situation where this ship is terrible in even though every other tier 8 DD would have excelled in. So let's go to that clip. Alright, so I'm going to kind of talk over this. I'm not going to go into the details of this clip, but this clip does definitely show a weakness of essentially the entire British destroyer design. Um, and you can point out my play if you want, if you want to be that way. But I want you to ask yourself, name a tier 8 destroyer that wouldn't blow up this entire situation. And what I mean by that is, they left B completely open. They have literally nothing at B. And look at my position. Name a fucking destroyer at tier 8 that wouldn't be able to just go ham in this situation and have an insanely good game. So keep that in mind while I digest this a bit and give you my final thoughts on the ship. So essentially, I do think that these ships can be fun. You have to find the situation to make them fun, though. 
the single drop torp thing I thought was a good enough thought experiment. Like I honestly thought that was kind of good enough. Now what I would suggest, and they're not going to do this, so I don't know why I'm wasting my breath, but because these are pretty much finalized because they, by the time you're watching this video, they're out. Like, uh, I guess the best example I can use as, like, a niche destroyer is going to be uh, the Asashio. It does one thing, but it does that one thing really well. But if you can't do that one thing, you are useless. And uh, if you own an Asashio and you think you can prove me wrong, send me a replay. Because if it's only you killing battleships, that's your special, that's your niche. If, it, if you can do anything else with it, send me a replay. I will watch it. Because I guarantee you're struggling if you can't just kill battleships. And that's the problem right now. Like you have to, like, and uh, speaking on a, on a game design term. Oh, and by the way, I'm not like every other, everyone else in Warships who just plays this game a lot and talks about game design. Uh, no, I have actually worked on video games. And I have actually went to school for it. Although, the key thing I want to point out is that I've worked on video games. And I've designed them. So I actually know what I'm talking about more than most about game design. Going niche this early. and They are early. Like I don't think War Gaming really realizes. I think they're trying to jump the gun and get to... Where World of Tanks at? Where World of Tanks is actually in a position to do niche stuff. They have enough content. They ha they've already kind of filled out the spectrum as much as they could. Now they're going niche and it's working for them. Warships is going niche way too early in my opinion. And it's only going to hurt the game. I thought this when British Battleships came out. I thought this when... Um, uh, uh, it's pretty much just mainly British Battleship. Like, anything British. Uh, no, here's the, here's where I really think it kind of went wrong. And the thing is, it went wrong because something went right. That's the kicker. British cruisers were a huge success, and they actually nailed them. Like, yeah, I, I think they should have done something a little different, personally, but they were effective. They were good ships. I enjoyed them. Uh, well... Emerald is still the worst grind I've ever had to go through. And I'm including this ship where I've detonated as much as I have. The Emerald is still the worst grind I've ever I've ever had to do. Uh, mainly because it was just completely unenjoyable. Like, oh, full, I do a full broadside shot and nothing happens. This gearing is going to kill me. Or the Ibuki, it doesn't matter. But just, I just want you guys to frame in mind, like any other DD, I would have been able to own a lot of those battleships before I went down. I wouldn't have had 16k damage. I would have had 200k that game. Easily. But that's kind of the issue with niching these so much, is they're only good in one situation, and there's no flexibility. So all in all, minus the detonations, this ship has been moderately fun to play. The torpedo range is the big uh, stick in the mud on it, because you really can't effectively use your guns. Because the ship's so thick, you get AP penned a lot. It's kind of tough to use the guns unless you're fighting DDs. And that's kind of like the role you're stuck in is you fight other DDs. That is what you're designed to do. And that's pretty much it. Um, there's other things you can do. You can work within the, you know, your skill level can permit you to do more like I've been able to get it to do. But I still have found that in most situations, I'd rather be in a different ship than playing these. I still have fun with them because I love destroyers. They are my they are my best class for a reason. I love them, but I still feel like the, these ships have fallen short in my opinion. Um, I like that they're experimenting. I really do, but not quite there yet. Uh, but I am liking the nine and the improved AP. I'm like, wow, they could have just made a line of miniature British cruisers that would have fit with the national traits, and it would have been interesting. And it would have been a lot of fun, but we didn't get that. So. Um, 9 and 10 are kind of like that. So I might do a replay breakdown of those. I will be playing those on stream. I am streaming now. Uh, follow me on Twitter to know when I stream. I announce it before I get on from there. And I do it on YouTube and Twitch. It's just kind of whatever mood I'm in. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a good day.